Good morning, good afternoon, or good night. My name is Dino Avatar, and today I want to talk to you on how the Battle of Haven is actually well written. Well, sort of. Yeah, I've really got to explain myself with this one, huh? So, yes, I do think the Battle of Haven is well written, just not well directed. You see, when I think of the Battle of Haven, I think of John's Ark, how it's revealed he sees himself as nothing more than a human shield, useless bait to be thrown and discarded. I think of Adam, the cool and collected villain, losing everything, going berserk, and then being taken out in a single move. I think of Yang Xiaolong dodging past Emerald and Mercury, giving up both her anger and her arm in a show of growth. I think of both sides of the war coming together in one big brawl, but when I watch the Battle of Haven, I get this John! This, 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 this isn't, this isn't what I was thinking of as I was describing the events. The Battle of Haven is actually really interesting with some great ideas, but is absolutely butchered by its animation slash direction. It's actually reminiscent of the Star Wars prequels, really. Both the prequel trilogy and the Battle of Haven are great examples of poor execution dragging down a great story. Because they are both the most interesting wiki articles. Researching the battle was a fun and interesting experience. I was enthralled by the story, but then I watched it again and got... No! Now there are a couple of ways the animation slash direction falls flat. First is all of the standing around. It feels like I'm watching a turn-based strategy game, really. Even the talking during battle complaint would be sort of lessened if done right. For instance, let's take a look at Crow vs. Raven. Instead of clashing and standing there, which is pretty easy animation-wise, they could have circled each other, looking for an opening as they talked, showing how advanced they are in combat. But this is a lot harder, because now you have to animate two walk cycles, and everybody else's fights that you'd see as the camera spun around to keep Crow and Raven in frame. The next problem is the stupidity in certain characters' actions, where, for instance, how Emerald forgot she has chains on her gun that could have pulled Yang back, although chains are hard to animate, by the way, but instead decided to dive for Yang instead which I'm gonna take a guess and say is a lot easier to animate than chains. Or take how Weiss goes from being an amazing duelist, again, really hard to animate, especially when you've already wasted all of your time and money on another fight scene, to just a summoner. She sticks her sword in the ground. They probably have this animation saved, seeing as how it's the same animation every single time. And my last major issue is the fact that everybody is doing absolutely nothing. Why are you all just standing there? Come on. Leo, please leave the stairs. Your mother misses you. I don't think I have to explain how everyone standing around, not being animated, saves on animation time. So, how did this happen? Why is the Battle of Haven like this? Well, first off, if you ask that, then you haven't been paying attention. The reason the Battle of Haven ended up the way it did, or at least what I think is the reason, was because it was a bit rushed. And by a bit rush, I mean this tweet went out three weeks before the final episode. This is a problem, because I don't believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe three weeks is enough time to fix the inevitable problems that come with using mocap, and then hand animate the faces 
then hand animate the scenes around the mocap, then record the voice acting, then add the effects, then fix any errors and physics objects, then review the full work, and then redo any of the scenes the animators might have interpreted wrong, gotten wrong, or just change certain aspects in the animation, and then, you know, just everything else. When you don't have time, you end up cutting down on certain things, like background details such as in the outside scenes with Adam and Blake, and reanimating certain awkward poses. And you can tell where a lot of the allocated resources went as well, because I don't think it's a coincidence that the best animated and directed scene of the Valium are also surrounded by some of the worst. So, how can these issues be fixed? Well, first off, if you're still taking advice on how to make Valium 6 two months before Valium 6 premieres, then you have already failed. Sorry to say. You know what, I probably shouldn't have made this video two months before Valium 6, but oh well. But seriously, first piece of advice, stop trying to be perfectionist. Trying to create the perfect show will mean you end up taking too long on certain aspects, which means you'll happen to still be writing or animating the beginning when you should be writing or animating your ending. As a wise woman once said, sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. Also, stop listening to your fans. Nothing good comes from opening the comment section. Wait, but then you're also missing out on useful criticism, so, so, you, so you should listen to your fans. But you also can't please everyone, and trying to will just end up ruining the project as a whole. You know what? Just keep an open mind towards the fans but don't actually listen to them. Cool? Oh, also be in the thick of it when it comes to the animation. I don't know how you guys do it, but just make sure that you have some way of showing the animators what you want to happen, whether it be storyboards, simple posing in the animation software, heck, even action figures would do. Just make sure you have some way of putting that story into a way that perfectly conveys what you want. For example, there are a hundred ways for a character to pick something up, and each way tells you something different about the character or the story. If they pick something up with two hands and stare at it, that thing must be important. If they pick something up nonchalantly, that thing is unimportant. And if they pick something up nonchalantly, but they make a few quick glances at it beforehand, it means they're hiding something about it. Just don't... What did Unicornivore put in his Ruby rewrites? Uh, oh yes, don't, don't do this. I know having action is skimmed over as to leave more creative freedom during production. I know that sounds like an appealing option, but it doesn't always work because there will be a dissonance between what the writer and animator envision. So when you leave the action open, you either need to be prepared to get something completely different from what you are seeing in your head as you're writing, or you need to prepare for a back and forth relationship. A relationship that will never work under a time limit. Just remember, there are a hundred different ways to pick up an object. It is the director's job to make sure it's the right way that conveys the story you're telling. But that's about it. Remember, a lot of what I said is just pure speculation. For all I know, Emerald could have really been written that dumb for that scene. But we will never know unless Kruby decides to release the scripts. Also, this video is a bit too late to affect Ruby Volume 6, but hey, maybe it's useful for Ruby Volume 7, or even to any aspiring directors who really probably shouldn't be listening to a 17-year-old who hasn't directed a single thing in their life, and who thinks that just because they've watched a lot of community episodes and video essays on directing that their opinion is valid. Well, please tell me what I did wrong, because I definitely did something wrong, and goodbye.